Hello, this is professional investor David Campbell, and welcome to the Hassle-Free Cashflow Minute. Today's lesson is about operating expenses. Operating expenses is a very important uh, art slash science to get your hand around because it can really make or break your, your property and your analysis of, of properties. The operating expenses are really a key part of understanding net operating income. If you want to refresh or go back to lesson three and understand net operating income is the adjusted gross income less operating expenses. Today's lesson is really how to identify, quantify what is included in operating expenses. A mistake a lot of people make is putting their uh, vacancy rate, rent concessions, and loss to lease as an expense. And that is not correct. Uh, all of these things go into adjusting the gross income because you don't spend money for vacancy or rent concession or lost at lease. It's just a lack of income. So these items on the screen here really are adjustments to income, not expenses. So let's look at operating expenses. Property taxes, typically it's a, uh, an amount paid twice a year or depending on your particular area or your arrangement with the lender, you may be paying monthly payments of property taxes into an impound account. Uh, liability and casualty insurance. Um, casualty insurance is part of protecting the lender and the owner against uh, a hazard such as fire or flood or uh, some type of damage to the property. Liability insurance is protecting the owner from a liability inside the property. Uh, such as a, a slip and fall accident or some type of uh, an electrocution in the, uh, the, the property that could be a liability to the owner. Um, property maintenance. Th these are ordinary course of um, business type items such as uh, fixing a faucet or fixing a toilet. Um, the, you don't typically include major capital expenses such as a roof repair or um, a new carpet into operating expenses. Typically, if you have a big, uh, big expense, you're going to spread that over a period of time. And that's at the very bottom of this list, replacement reserve. Uh, replacement reserve is when you uh, figure, okay, I'm going to spend uh, $12,000 on a particular item, but I'm only have to do that item every 12 years, well then you would spread that $12,000 cost over 12 years, $1,000 a year, rather than putting a $12,000 expense into a single year. Um, management is a cost, it's an operating expense, and there's an on-site management uh, and off-site. Typically you only have on-site if you're talking about a large property, either commercial or apartments. Uh, off-site management is your typical property manager collecting a, either a flat fee or a percentage of, of rent. Utilities, when you're calculating your operating expenses, you may have utilities when it's occupied, maybe not, maybe your tenant pays all the utilities, but when you're vacant, Make sure you budget a uh, part of your vacancy reserve is a cost for utilities, specifically water, sewer, and electric during the period of time where you're showing the property. The next item, landscaping and lawn care. It's possible that your tenant takes care of all the uh, landscaping and lawn care, but again, when you're vacant, you may have a, a lawn service fee. Uh, cost of entity maintenance. This is a, an item that a lot of people forget. If you decide to hold your property in a limited liability company, then there's a cost to maintain that uh, entity on an annual basis. Legal fees and annual filing fees to the state where the property and the LLC are located. Accounting and tax preparation. A lot of investors are doing the accounting themselves or they're managing the manager themselves and that has a cost. Uh, even if you're doing it yourself, I encourage investors to allocate a cost to that, uh, due to the cost of your own time. And lastly, tax preparation. You're going to have an extra form, uh, Schedule E, on your tax return, and there's usually a small fee uh, associated with that preparation. You can allocate that fee per property on an operating expense basis. Um, when you're looking at a property, it's very easy to kill the return or be overly optimistic with the return and the operating expense feature. I see very often where people can quantify the rent very easily, but then when they're looking at the operating expenses, they can go too far one way or the, the other, and the property either doesn't make sense or makes sense when it shouldn't because of operating expenses. 
If you're buying a, a property, a resale property, it's a good idea to ask the seller for copies of their operating expenses uh, and operating income. If it's a commercial property, you'll get this on a, a rent roll or a 12-month operating statement. A slang for that could be T12. Give me the tw trailing 12-month average of operating income and expenses. Uh, if you are buying a new property, you have to kind of guesstimate. You have to understand um, what are the my expenses likely to be as an owner. Some of these expenses you may not choose to put on your, your analysis of a deal, such as accounting and tax preparation or entity maintenance. If you've got multiple properties, you can allocate that expense over multiple properties, etc. Or just to make the deal pencil, you may uh, decide to leave off some of these items uh, to see if a deal makes sense or does not make sense. Here's a case study. Just for simplicity, I have a $10,560 adjusted gross income. This came from lesson three as a rollover. And let's assume I have $3,000 in annual property taxes, $560 in annual insurance, and $1,000 maintenance replacement reserve, and $1,000 of property management. You would take the AGI, adjusted gross income, and you would subtract all of your operating expenses from that, and the result is your annual net operating income. This is David Campbell, and this is the Hassle Free Cash Flow Minute. For more investing ideas and education about real estate investing, please visit my website, hasslefreecashflowinvesting.com.